How are you guys doing? It is Tuesday, August 4th, 2020 here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims. And for today, I'm going to get into what's happened yesterday in terms of uh, what's going on with sports, my elite athletes, the elite performances, and just the big games that happened last night and how it plays into where they stand right now. Um, and also, a soccer icon has officially retired today. Um, former Real Madrid goalie Iker Casillas has officially hung up the gloves. He's now age 39. Um, he's He's been the goalie at Real Madrid from 1999 to 2015. Um, a part of some really, really big teams for the past five, six years. I think it's five years now. He's been the goalie at FC Porto, one of the top teams in Portugal. And even just listing off everything that he's done. I mean, he was the goalie for Spain when they won the World Cup in 2010. They won the Euro, they won the Euro Cup twice in 2008 2012 so they were really really dominant he was definitely holding it down he's won the champions league three times with real madrid he's won la liga five times he's won the supercopa twice the spanish supercopa four times he's won the he's won the portuguese league once with fc porto um i mean there's so much that he's done as a goalie and no, I mean, he's, I mean, we're waving farewell to a player who's had an amazing career, a definite icon um, of, of terms of Spanish soccer and just global soccer as a whole for what he's been able to do for Real Madrid and for the Spanish national team, which is a lot, I would say. Like, it's Neuer level, but Neuer's still at that level. I would consider Casillas elite, but I don't know. He's not that level anymore, but he's officially retired and I, and I'm going to give him his well dude well well earned respects for everything that he's done in soccer so i'm going to transition right now to baseball um first game that happened yesterday was between the reds and the indians and the cleveland uh the cleveland indians would fall to the reds on the road the reds would go ahead on a two-run home run from joey Votto in the sixth to eventually give him the edge um sunny gray would be their starting pitcher who he would get his third win on the season he's now three and oh um, after striking out eight and allowing one run through six innings, even just um, going to the Cleveland Indians, their shortstop Francisco Lindor would finish two for four with a run and an RBI. Um, it simply wouldn't be enough. And with this, the Indians fall to five and six. And now the Reds are sitting at 500 in the National League Central. Um, another AL-NL Central matchup is between the Pirates and the Twins. And with this, the Pirates now have eight losses on the season after falling five to four to the Minnesota Twins. Um, all five of the Twins' runs came after the Pirates scored their four. So, I mean, there was a point in time where the Pirates were up four to five. Um, but, yeah, simply the Twins would pull it away, um, especially off of a four-run sixth that where the Pirates simply couldn't recover. Um, and Nelson Cruz, the Minnesota Twins' DH, would finish three for five with a run and two RBIs, including the game-winning RBI single that walked off that won the game for the Twins, which to me was probably the best play of the night. Um, going on to the other Central, AL Central, NL Central matchup, the Milwaukee Brewers hosted the White Sox after their hiatus, after being scheduled with back-to-back -back teams with covid difficulties and everything so um going into this game the white Sox score four of their six runs in the last three innings to give them the six to four win over the brewers with this win they now jump to six and four uh, like, i mean they won six of i think that's funny and then the milwaukee brewers are now dropping to three and four within their division their left fielder christian yelich would finish the game two for four with a run on the day um, for the White Sox, Yoan Moncada would finish three for five with an RBI and two runs, including a, including a solo home run in the ninth. Um, additionally, uh, Abreu would hit a home run in the seventh, a two run home run that would tie the game up. Um, but it was a, it was a pretty big run for the White Sox as he hit that home run in the seventh, gave him the momentum and they eventually took the lead. And now the, like I said, the White Sox are sitting at six and four. Um, the other, uh, central matchup that happened was between the Kansas City Royals and the Chicago Cubs. Um, as the Cubs are now sitting at 8-2 and two, following their 2-0 shutout of the Kansas City Royals behind their starting pitcher Alec Mills, 
who struck out four and allowed no runs and three hits in seven full innings pitched. Um, their Chris Bryant would play at left field, finishing two for three for the day with an RBI and a run as he hit his first home run of the season. Um, their shortstop, Javi Baez, had finished 0 for 3 with an RBI on the day. Um, they both had the RBIs to give the Cubs the edge over the Royals. I mean, great win by the Cubs. And now the Cubs are sitting by themselves at the top of the NL Central. Um, and then the last game that was postponed is the game between the Detroit Tigers and the St. Louis Cardinals as the St. Louis Cardinals coronavirus uh Update shows that a lot of a lot of the players have caught it. So this is going to be a, a much longer quarantine. The St. Louis Cardinals are going to be sitting out of the the major leagues for a bit. Um, I assume when they return, it's going to be all better. But for right now, they were scheduled to play the Tigers, but they didn't play. Um, okay, so moving out to the West, because I always I always go to the East just to shake a couple things up. Um, first matchup I'm going to bring up is between the San Francisco Giants and the Colorado Rockies as the Rockies are now sitting at 7-2 and two after beating the Giants 7-6. to six. The Giants put on two runs in the ninth, but they simply weren't enough. Colorado scored five runs in the sixth. Um, that would just give them the edge, and the Giants just simply couldn't come back. Uh, for the Colorado Rockies, their, sh- um, their third baseman, Nolan Arenado, would finish one for three with two RBIs and a run as he hit his first home run of the season. And with this one run loss, the Giants now fall to five and six in the National League West, which isn't great. I mean, I guess they do have some breathing room because outside of the Rockies, the next two best teams are fighting it off. Uh, in, they were fighting it off in San Diego as the San Diego Padres were able to squeeze this win from the Dodgers last night, um, outscoring them five to four in a really, really well pitched game between Walker Bueller and Chris Paddock, where there was no decision between those both. Between both pitchers, they both allow three runs, both great young pitchers, especially playing in the same division. Nah, I like what they're doing with this. For the Los Angeles Dodgers, um, their center fielder, Cody Bellinger, would finish one for four with an RBI and a run um, as he would hit his second home run of the season. And then going on to the San Diego Padres, their shortstop, Fernando Tatis Jr., would finish one for three with an RBI and a run. Um, as he finished, as he hit his third home run in the of the season in the fifth inning off of Walker Bueller, um, and Manny Machado would finish one for three with a run on the day. And like I said, with this, the Padres and the Dodgers are both tied to the National League West at seven and four. Big outing for both teams, and no, they should be proud of themselves. And then going out to what looks like it was the only American League West. Game of the night, the Oakland Athletics were able to beat the Mariners pretty soundly. They beat them eleven to one off of an eight run fifth inning. Um, but no, it was it was it was a big game for the whole season. Chris Davis would hit his first home run of the season in the seventh inning, and with this win, the Oakland A's are now six and four in the American League West, um, and the Seattle Mariners are now four and seven. Um, that's that was the only American League West game that was scheduled, and now I'm gonna shift to the National League East just to start it right now. Um, there was a matchup last night between the New York Mets and the Atlanta Braves in Atlanta. Bad news for the Braves. Their young elite starting pitcher uh, Mike Soroka would go on to tear his Achilles. He is now out for the season. He would pick up his first loss of the season as he allowed four earned runs and two point one innings following his first two starts, ending in a no decision. Um, who, I guess he's going to finish the season with a 395 ERA and Jacob deGrom would pick up the win following a six inning performance where he only allowed two runs and he struck out 10 batters. Um, their first baseman, Pete Alonzo would finish 0 for two with a run on the day. He was walked three times. Um, and then looking for, and then the right fielder, Michael Conforto would finish three for five on the day with an RBI and two runs. I mean, um, in this case, I mean, he had a three-hit game. Amazing game from him. Um, and going to the Atlanta batters, the right fielder, Ronald Acuna Jr., would finish two for four with an RBI and a walk on the day. Um, their second baseman, Ozzy Albies, would come back from a wrist injury, but he would finish 0 for 4, striking out three times. Their first baseman, Freddie Freeman, would finish 0 for 4 with a strikeout. Um, and even even their hot bat, Dansby Swanson, would finish 0 for 4 with four strikeouts. Um, but with this loss, the Braves now fall to seven and four. But considering that half of their division has been on hiatus for coronavirus, I think they have. I mean, as of right now, they're holding on to that lead, um, especially right now. 
And the last performance of the night was an AL East NL East matchup as the Philadelphia Phillies played their fourth game of the season in New York, but they were to follow the Yankees. The Yankees are now eight and one. They've lost one game and they've lost one of their last nine games. Um, they beat them six to three. Just off an amazing pitching, perf- uh, amazing hitting performances just from the team. I mean, LeMay, he would hit his second home run of the season. Um, and for the New York Yankees, the right fielder Aaron Judge would finish two for four with a run. LeMay, he would finish two for four with a run and an RBI. Um, their designated hitter, Giancarlo Santa, would finish 0 for two with a walk, which would turn into a run. He also struck out this day. And um, just looking out to Phil- looking out to Philly in their first game back, Bryce Harper, their right fielder, would finish one for four with two strikeouts. And with this loss, the Phillies now fall to one and three. And like I said, the Yankees are now eight and one. And as of right now, they have the best record in the American League. So now, as you just take a look at what's going on with the standings as of right now, with everything going on, with uh, and I'm still gonna just give you a hint of where every team stands, how many games they've played. So first, I'm going to start off with the National League. I'll start off from the bottom this time. In the National League West, the Colorado Rockies are sitting comfortably atop by themselves at a set with a 7-2 and two record. Um, one game behind them is a tie between the 7-4 and four Los Angeles Dodgers and the 7-4 and four San Diego Padres, who just tied after the Padres win. Um, two games behind them are the five and six San Francisco Giants who are now three full games behind the first place Rockies um, and a game and a half behind the San Francisco Giants are the three and seven Arizona Diamondbacks who are four and a half games behind the Colorado Rockies. Now going to the National League Central, the Chicago Cubs sitting by themselves at eight and two. Um, three games behind them in second place are the five and five Cincinnati Reds. Um, and half a game behind them are the three and four Milwaukee Brewers who have only played seven games, but they just missed one series. Um, tied with them are the two and three St. Louis Cardinals. They're both a game below 500. It seems as though the St. Louis is going to be on hiatus for a bit, but as of right now, they're still sitting three and a half games along with Milwaukee behind the Chicago Cubs at eight and two. And in last place in the National League Central, you have the Pittsburgh Pirates who are now sitting at two and eight. Um, and they are six full games behind the first place Cubs after 10 games played. Um, moving up to the National League East, the Atlanta Braves currently have the best record in the, in the American League East. Only they and the Mets have played 11 games. Um, sitting a game behind them, technically they're a game over 500. The Miami Marlins are 2-1. and one. Um, A game behind the Miami Marlins are the uh, Washington Nationals, who are now sitting at three and four after only playing seven games after one of their um, series went or got postponed. But yeah, he would go. They are now sitting two games behind the Atlanta Braves as of right now. Um, Sitting a game behind them are the four and seven or New York Mets, who are sitting three games behind the Atlanta Braves. Um, and again, they're sitting at four and seven. They're the only other team in the NL least that has played 11 games. Um, and sitting in last place, or I mean, sitting half a game ahead of the Mets because they're now, they're one and three. They're two games below 500. But as of right now, they're two and a half games behind the Atlanta Braves. Those are the, that's the Phillies. They've only played four games and the Braves have played 11. Same with the Mets. I mean, I, I mean, I guess we have to see how they catch up. This is really going to be something. Now moving to the American League, starting from the West, the Oakland A's have, uh, they're currently sitting on top of the AL West by themselves. Half a game behind them are the five and four Houston Astros, um, and a game and a half behind the Houston Astros are the three and five Texas Rangers, who are now sitting two games behind the first place A's. Half a game behind the Rangers are the four and seven Seattle Mariners, who are two and a half games behind Oakland. And half a game behind them are the three and seven Los Angeles Angels, who are three games behind the Oakland A's. Um, going to the American League Central, the Minnesota Twins are now eight and two um, on top of their division uh, by two games. Two games behind them, you'll find the Chicago White Sox, who are now six and four. Um, and then a game behind them are the five and five Detroit Tigers, ha- who are three games behind the Twins. Half a game behind the Tigers are the five and six Cleveland Indians, three and a half games behind the Minnesota Timberwolves. And two games behind the Indians are the Kansas City Royals, who are now three and eight, five and a half games behind the first place Twins. Last but not least, going to the American League East, the Yankees have the best record in baseball. They're eight and one right now. And 
Um, so the second place Orioles are sitting at five and three, two and a half games behind them. Um, a game and a half behind the Orioles are the three and four Toronto Blue Jays. They've only played seven games because one of their series was on hiatus. Um, but they're now four games behind the Yankees. Sitting in third or sitting in fourth, I mean, are the four and six Tampa Bay Rays, who are now four and a half games behind the Yankees and a game behind the Rays sitting at the bottom are the three and seven Boston Red Sox. Um, they're now sitting five and a half games behind the Yankees after the Yankees have only played nine games. I mean, that's what baseball is looking like right now. I'm going to transition to basketball very quickly. First big game of the night was between the Raptors and the Heat. I mean, just even just Pascal Siakam, uh, amazing performance as he put up 22 points, shooting 7 for 14 from the field. The big performance for the game would come from Fred Van Vliet, who would put on 36 points and five, re- 5 rebounds, 4 assists, shooting 7 for 12 from the 3 line and making all 13 of his free throws as the Raptors were able to win and beat the Heat by 4, just inching this win out. Um, looking at the Miami Heat, uh, their best performance came from Goran Dragic off the bench, coming in with 25 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists. But the Heat simply weren't enough. And with this loss, the Heat are now sitting 4th in, um, in the East, a game ahead of the Pacers and 2.5 and games behind the Celtics. And with this win, the Raptors are 5.5 games behind the Bucks. I don't think they can catch the Bucks, but they're still 4 games ahead of the Celtics. So it looks like they're sitting pretty comfortably in that 2nd place spot. Um, I don't think Celtics. I don't think the Celtics are going to come for them anytime soon. But this was a this is probably a loss that the Heat didn't need, and it was definitely a much needed win for the Raptors. Uh, the next game of the night was a was a game that went into overtime between the Denver Nuggets and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, yeah, they played really really well. It got into overtime. they uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder elite point guard Chris Paul would finish with twenty three points, two rebounds, and eight assists. And their shooting guard, Shea Gilgis Alexander, would finish with 24, 5, and 2 um, as, the, as they just came up short. Going into the Nuggets side, their elite center, Nikola Jokic, would finish with 30 points, 12 rebounds, and 10 assists, a 30 point triple double while shooting 10 for 21 from the field, shooting 10 for making 10 of his 11 free throws. And another big performance of the night that came unexpected was the young power forward, Michael Porter Jr. He scored 37 points, a career high. I don't even think his previous career high was very close. He finished with 12 rebounds on the day. He shot 12 for 16 from the field, 4 for 6 from the 3 line, and 9 for 9 from the free throw line. Um, with this win, the, the Denver Nuggets are comfortably sitting in the third spot. They're sitting half a game, a game and a half behind the Clippers and a game and a half ahead of the Rockets. It was a, it was a much-needed win, and it does get them closer to the Clippers, and they're still within striking distance, and they can take away and at this point they can take the second seed from the clippers if the clippers uh, if the if the clippers get caught slacking like the nuggets might take that spot um another game of the night was the between the indiana pacers and the wizards um tj warren after scoring 53 the previous game he would go on to score 34 drop 11 rebounds and four rebounds with three steals and four blocks shooting 14 for 26 from the field i mean i don't like TJ Warren is making a case to be one of the elite, honestly, in the bubble at least. Um, but the Wizards wouldn't be able to put enough together, and now the Wizards drop yet another game. With this loss, the Wizards are currently ninth in the East. They're now seven and a half games behind the Nets, so I think it's only a matter of time. I believe I think the Nets have already clinched the East. I'm not completely sure. But with this loss, the Wizards should be out of the East. They should be out of the running. And going to the Indiana Pacers with this win, they are currently fifth. And they're currently sitting a game below the fourth place Heat and a game above the sixth place 76ers. So this is a much needed win for the Pacers right now. And I think the Wizards are officially out. Um, another game of the night became uh, became between the two uh, leading rookies, the number one of the two pick of the 2019 NBA draft, um, as Zion Williamson took on Ja Morant, and the Pelicans would end up beating them by ten. For the Grizzlies, their point guard Ja Morant would finish with eleven points, five rebounds, and eight assists, shooting five for twenty one from the field, one for ten from the three line. Not his best game. Um, but the Grizzlies did kind of help putting it in. I mean, Grayson Allen off the bench would put in 17. Props to Grayson, you know, Duke guy for sure. And then for the Pelicans, you know all the Duke guys on this team. 
but just to list them, their elite forward Zion Williamson would finish with 23 points in 25 minutes, shooting 9 for 21 from the field, making 5 of his 10 free throws, finishing with 7 rebounds and 5 assists. Uh, helping the helping the Pelicans get this win. Brandon Ingram would also toss in 24 points, seven rebounds, and five assists. Um, and additionally, Lonzo Ball, seven points, six assists, but four steals. I remember he had a really, really big defensive game. Um, it was just a big game for both sides. And it was a much-needed win for the Pelicans because with this Grizzlies loss, the Pelicans are getting uh, – they're inching closer. The Pelicans right now are two and a half games behind the Grizzlies – um, but they still have to get to the pay, the Trailblazers and the Spurs because the, with this loss, the Grizzlies, there's no way they can clinch the seventh seed. But they're still two games ahead of the Trailblazers and the Spurs, so they kind of have to win out if they have they they have to win out. But they're still kind of comfortably in that eighth place spot in the West. Um, going out to another game, the Philadelphia 76ers hosted the Spurs in a game that, in regulation, would have the Sixers winning 132 to 130. For the Spurs, DeMar DeRozan would finish with 30 points, 5 rebounds, um, all while shooting 11 for 20 from the field, making all 7 of his free throws. Um, but it just wasn't enough. For the Sixers, their elite point guard, Ben Simmons, would finish with 8 points, 2 rebounds, and 5 assists, shooting 4 for 6 from the field. Their center, Joel Embiid, would finish with, seven, with 27 points, 9 rebounds, and 5 assists, shooting 9 for 17 from the field. Their small forward, Tobias Harris, would also chip in 25 to help them get to help them grab the win, which was much needed because now with this win, like I said earlier, they are now one game behind the Pacers still. Um, two games behind the fourth place heat. So, I mean, they, they're still within striking distance and they can, they can move a couple spots if things go their way. And with this loss, the San Antonio Spurs are, they dropped to two games behind the Grizzlies still because the Grizzlies lost. It was a win that the Spurs definitely needed, but the Sixers definitely proved that they, they needed it more. And the last game of the night happened between the Los Angeles Lakers and the Utah Jazz as the performance of the night would go to Anthony Davis, who dropped 42 points and 12 rebounds. And to me, I think even though they won by eight, I think a step back three, the dagger over Rudy Gobert, that was the play of the game. That was the defensive player of the year. Like I have him, I have him on my elite specifically, or 87% because of his defense. But he would, yeah, I mean, he would shoot 13 for 28 from the field. Um, four for eight from the three line, 12 for 15 from the free throw line. I mean, Anthony Davis is out here making his case, man. In addition to him, their elite point guard, LeBron James, have finished with 22 points, eight rebounds, and nine assists. Um, and with this win, the Los Angeles Lakers clinched the first spot in the in the West for the first time in a bit. But um, at the last time that they were able to do it, Kobe was on the team. And now LeBron, it's, it's a completely different era. And you can see what the Lakers have done to push this whole team in a new direction. I mean, looking at the Jazz before I get into it, Donovan Mitchell did score 33 points um, with five rebounds, four assists, uh, shooting nine for 22 from the field. You know, just Donovan Mitchell stuff. Their center, Rudy Gobert, would finish with 16 points, 13 rebounds, and one block on the game. But like I'm saying, the Los Angeles Lakers are now six games ahead of the Clippers um, with six game, with five games to go, I believe, which means they got it. Very, very big win for both sides. It was much needed. And with this, I mean, the Jazz now fall to the fifth spot. They now drop to half a game below the Rockets as the Rockets moved up. They leapfrog them, and they're now half a game above the Thunder. And if they lose again and the Thunder win, the Thunder could leapfrog them, and the Jazz could fall from fourth to sixth in a couple games. But that's what the situation is right now. And going last, going into hockey, because I'm actually curious as to how this hockey season is going to go, but it's most definitely exceeding my expectations. First, um, the Rangers took on the Hurricanes and the Hurricanes were able to pick up four goals on the Rangers as their left winger, um, Sebastian Aho, would finish with three assists on the night, helping them get that win. And their right winger, Andre Sheshchenov, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm Sheshchenikov, I, I'm sorry for butchering the name, but he would finish with a hat trick for the day. And yeah, he would give the Carolina Hurricanes the much needed win. And they now lead the series over the New York Rangers two to nothing. Um, also, another big game from this day. 
the Winnipeg Jets took on the Calgary Flames, and the Jets were able to score. Uh, they were able to score one goal in each period, as it gave them the edge over Calgary. Um, yeah, very very big win for both sides. Um, or not very big game for both sides. And now the series is tied at one as Winnipeg pulled forward at the very, very end, thanks to um, Nikolaj Ezer's power play goal. And another game, another really wild game that I actually watched was between the Capitals and the Lightning. And this one went to shootouts. I mean, it went to, I mean, it went to overtime. They didn't score and the Lightning pulled out the win in the very, very end. But it was a very, very well played uh, match between both sides. And with that, the Tampa Bay Lightning win the round robin, so they automatically advance. Um, another big, another big game was the Vegas Golden Knights beating the Dallas Stars for their round robin. They went on as like after the after Dallas took a three one lead after the second period. The Golden Knights would score four goals in the third in the third period, and they would take the and they would win five to three. Um, big win for the side, and they win this round robin, so they get to advance past the Dallas Stars. Um, another big game, or another name, uh, next game happened between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Canadians as the Penguins tied up this series in the first round. Um, and for this, uh, I mean, no, I mean, Sidney Crosby would score yet another goal as they scored two of their goals in the last period. Uh, to just give them just to give them the edge and now they tied up the series and now is moving on last game of the night would happen between the Chicago Blackhawks and the Edmonton Oilers the Edmonton Oilers scored two goals in every single period um, as they went on to win it six to three Connor McDavid their elite center would finish with three goals which is a hat trick he would finish that would be his fourth hat trick of the season and the Edmonton Oilers are they tied the series with the Chicago Blackhawks after the Blackhawks put up six goals on them the last game so that is completely crazy that was that's what's hat that's what happened yesterday and I'll take you to the sports just to show you what's going on today with um, with today's games first I'm going to start with baseball um, the earliest game that the there's gonna be a 210 game 210 afternoon game is Jose Barrios makes yet makes another start for the Minnesota Twins I really like him he's not getting off to the best start but I think he's doing really well right now the pitcher of the year is Shane Bieber and he's making his third start as he still allowed no runs and he struck out 27 batters in his first two games um, Charlie Morton will go on to make another star for the Tampa Bay Rays as they take on Nathan Eovaldi and the Red Sox at 640. Um, the Braves are going to take on the Blue Jays as Max Fried now assumes the ace spot now that Soroka is out with a torn ACL. Um, Lucas Giolito is going to make yet another start for the Chicago White Sox as they face off against Brandon Woodruff and the Milwaukee Brewers. Um, additionally, Kyle Singer is going to make another start for the Royals as he faced off against Kyle Hendricks, who had an amazing shutout at the beginning of the season, but his second start wasn't that great. Um, another big game to look out for, Madison Bumgarner is going to pitch off against Christian Javier of the Houston Astros at 9-10, big game between them. Uh, between the And then the Dodgers are going to play as Dustin May makes his start against Padres starter Denelson Lament, um, but... Uh, this will be a pretty big game for both teams as they're both tied with with at second in the National League West behind the Rockies and the Angels play the Mariners tonight. But the two postponed games are going to be between the Cardinals and the Tigers because of the Cardinals. And um, I mean, they're back. I mean, the Marlins are still out and they're not playing. They would have played the Phillies tonight, but that game's getting postponed. That's what's going on with baseball, transitioning to basketball, what's going on in that department. Um, I mean, I think there are I mean, a couple big games today just to, just to take notice of. Um, one to look out for is the next, I mean, the Nets and the Bucks. I'm not sure if the Bucks have clinched the East yet, but they definitely should today. That'll be a pretty big game to watch. I imagine they already did. Um, a big game also is going to be is going to be between the Celtics and the Heat on TNT at six thirty, and then up following them is going to be the Rockets and the Trailblazers, as the Trailblazers are still fighting for a playoff spot, and the Celtics and Heat are fighting for playoff position. I mean, they're within a couple games or three games of each other. That's going to be a big game for both sides. Um, and then looking as to what's going to happen with hockey today, and I mean just between these games, I'm going to watch as many of these as I can. 
the the, the Islanders are going to take on the Florida Panthers for game two as the Islanders lead that series one nothing. The Arizona Coyotes lead the Nashville Predators one nothing as they play as they face off in their second game at two thirty. The Columbus Blue Jackets are leading the Toronto Maple Leafs one nothing as they play at four o'clock. Um, game three of Calgary and Winnipeg is going to happen at six forty five as the, that series is tied at one. Um, game three of the Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Rangers are going to is going to happen at eight p.m. Uh, as the Carolina Hurricanes lead this series to nothing. And game two of the Minnesota Wild and the Vancouver Canucks is at 10.45 Eastern Standard Time um, as the Minnesota Wild currently lead that series. With that said, that's a lot of sports that's happened yesterday, and there's a lot to look out for today. Um, Thanks for hearing me out. Thanks for letting me say my piece. Peace out.